Hey everybody, it's Cinnamon Cooney, your art Sherpa, and today I'm going to be showing you how to paint this adorable little narwhal-style cutie patootie ghost here that's all just so sweet and cute. You just want to give its little ghosty face tons of little kisses. On the mic is my husband, John. Hey guys. Um, this is going to be a really simple and easy painting. I think you're going to love it. I'm going to explain a lot of things to you. And because you're painting with little brushes, probably I'm going to give some extra tips that are focused that way. To that end, if you check the materials list below, there is a traceable, which can be used as a coloring page, and also some material suggestions on colors. I'm going to talk about the exact colors that I'm using and why I'm using them, and I'm also going to let you know what you should be looking for in your own acrylic colors and brushes for this project. Now, Starting out, I will, isn't he cute? You ready? Very, very cute. Bye, bye, cutie patootie. You'll be on the canvas again in a second because we're going to make you. All right. I have a small 9 by 12 uh, canvas board here. If you're painting with little brushes, sometimes it's a good idea to downsize to an 8 by 10 or a 9 by 12. And even for yourself if you're new to painting because painting can be weirdly fatiguing for not being at the gym. So shrinking down the size keeps it from being so much for everybody to take on. I've got a little bit of colored kids chalk. This is the kind that you get at the CVS store and it's very inexpensive. You know, just any drugstore, any kid store. Uh, this is actually Crayola, so I'm going to be using this. And that's just so you can see me sketch him in on the canvas. But of course, you can use that traceable coloring page as well. On the colors over here, I want to talk to you about these. I have an incredibly bright orange. Right? This is almost like that safety orange that you see. Now, the specific exact orange I'm using is pyral orange, okay, which is pigment orange 73. That might be a little bit luxurious <laughs> to be using for most of you on a painting. So what I would say is mix your orange, what red and yellow make an orange, right? And if you want it to be brighter, it's a little more yellow than red. Interesting fun fact. All right, I've got phthalo blue here. Any blue you like will work. I've got black here. I'm using specifically, I think in this one, I actually am using carbon black, but Mars black, any black you have. I have titanium white. I have phthalo green. Any good green that you like that's nice and rich. I have a nice cad yellow hue, and I'm doing hue on this one because you wouldn't want to use real cadmium pigments with kids, would we? Or if we had any allergies or any of that, but you could use Hansi yellow, just any bright sunny yellow. And this is quinacridone magenta. So you're looking for something that says magenta because it's going to make a really good pink for you and also make nice purples with your blues. So that's why we picked those colors. First thing we're going to do is sketch on a ghosty ghost. I did introduce you, right, John? Yes, I think so. Okay. I'm, I'm I would John. I would hate to forget to do that because invisible I, stunt hands. I, I'm having kind of a week here. In like yesterday's painting, I um, completely stepped in the internet. Oh, you did! I did. I seriously stepped in the internet. Yeah, and I'm you... gonna get et, et by it. Yeah, it was probably the worst Sherpa mistake I think you've seen, I've seen you make yet. Ever. 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 And and that was you called Padfoot. A werewolf. Serious Black, I said he was a werewolf instead of an anime, just and I'm really sorry. And I understand that I have been kicked out of nerd circles. You, you, you've, been, you've been kicked out of Geek Club. I'm so sorry. You're going to have to go. very tired. I have a lot going on. You, you need to go read Tolkien's Lord of the Rings, and you can come back. <laughs> Is that my punishment? <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's a good punishment. I guess i got to make more geek mistakes. <laughs> to do my little ghost, here's my little recommendation. When I'm doing him, I make a nice round space. That's the front of his little head. I got to make sure that I have room though, right? For his cute little horns. Mm -hmm. So, and here's my little trick I'm going to show you later for the horn. I've got a little bit of tape here. This is specifically washi tape. All kids know washi tape because washi tape is the cute tape. That's going to help me be stripey with my horn, but it's not strictly necessary. Now, coming around here, I want to make sure that he's got a little ghostly tail that kind of kind of ghosts off to the side, right? Wanders off. As I'm bringing this line around, so the trick is to make this parallel to this line and follow it, but then also try to merge into it. So it's like what you definitely never want to do in traffic. You want to really, really do here. <laughs> I'm sorry, this is funny to me. <laughs> Don't do it in traffic, but definitely do it here. I gotta make sure he's got enough face. And let's see that we've got enough horn. So I'm gonna draw a little horn up here. Feel like I maybe need to give him a little more horn room. So I'll move the head back. 
He needs horn room, right? Well, now's the time you can prototype that out. Because a little bit of chalk can be adjusted a lot easier than paint, right? Exactly. And that's why I do my first sketching in chalk. If you're a kid, if you're a little brush, and you feel like you made a mistake, I'm going to show you something really important so you know you don't need to stop. What? Okay? That's the biggest mistake anybody could make, right? Yeah. And I'm not going to stop and paint another one. I'm not going to start over. My advice to you, if you really want to be an artist, is to when you make a mistake in a painting, don't stop. Don't throw it away. Don't erase. Keep going. Because that's how your brain's going to make those connections that you need to make to do those big art things. So, see, I'm going to just keep going. It's not going to bother me. I'm going to paint right over it. I'm going to clean it up. Let me show you how easy. Okay? This is just something I want to get right up out of the way so that if you're a little brush, you know it's not a big deal. See how this brush just has water on it? And I can take that chalk right off, can I? Oh, yeah. And so, even though it's blue, all it's doing is blending kind of like a watercolor. This is going to be real easy to paint over. It's not going to hurt my painting at all. That just softens it all right up. It does, and I can easily get any boo-boos that I make right off and Thanks. then dry it, and then I'm fine. So in art, when we make mistakes, what we actually do is we just take a deep breath and make a plan to fix it and keep going forward because every painting builds on the painting that happened before it, and you can't get those bricks if you don't finish the paint. So that's my real honest advice for you if you wanna grow up and be an artist, or if you're a big brush who wants to be an artist, don't let the goof ups throw you. All right, now the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put in some wings. Let's put in some little wingy wings. So I'm gonna make a little upward line here, and I think I'll do another little upward line here. And then I curve it back almost the opposite way. Can you guys see that? Yeah. And then I go scoop, 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 and join in. There we go. Not hard at all. Let's go here. Scoop, 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 and join in. That's all we've got to do for that. That's all that's required. It's not a big deal. You can totally do that. Now the next part is pretty fun. We're going to get a square brush. This is called a bright. This particular one is a ruby satin number 20. When brushes have short handles, the numbers are larger than the same size brush and a long handle. See? Number 8, number 20. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. So that's something you might not know if you watch a video and you go out to buy art materials. You might be like, what is going on? Now, what you saw me do there is I got my brush in a little bit of water and I drug all the extra water off on the rim. And I'm going to load up both sides of my brush like this. See, I go from the paint and I get it all in there. That's how my brush drinks up the paint. And I'm going to come in and just paint all my background with this orange. You use the orange you have. Because like I said, using pyro orange is crazy. It's just the brightest orange I have on hand. <laughs> but it's a very nice pigment that fine artists use. The orange you use is the best orange. The orange you use is the best orange. And I had two oranges on hand. I had cadmium orange, only the real pigment. And I had pyro orange, which at least was, you know, not cadmium pigment. Oh, wait, well, yeah, I see. Hmm? That's a good call. What? Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, so that was my call there. I was like, well, we'll just do a pyro. Yeah, and it's a good orange. It's a beautiful orange. It's, it's like bright safety, just so saturated, so bright to the eye. But there's lots of oranges that are like that. So when you're picking at your paint, whether you're picking it out in craft paints this time or using heavy bodied paints, just make sure that you're picking bright colors that make your heart happy because you're going to get the best results from those. Not maybe as bright as my pyro orange, <laughs> but there's literally nothing as bright as that. Mm -hmm. That is the brightest. If bright, bright orange is your thing, this is the brightest. It's the brightest of all of them. I should actually have an orange off and like test out like all the psycho oranges against each other. <laughs> like oranges would battle anyways. They wouldn't. They would not battle. Paint colors don't actually battle. I, you know, they work I, together. I, so 
it I know it is the 13 days of Halloween, but I came in last night and I could swear I heard some noises coming from your paint bins. What? There, there, there may be some rumbles happening in there. I, I for my paint bins. Yeah. I don't know what we're talking about. You have talked over my head, my darling. The, the paint's battling. The paint's battling at night. I think they're they're it's 13 days I'll of have Halloween. I'll put a stop to that. That's not going to be okay. The paint is battling. The paint needs to not battle. Different brands can get along. I... Different colors can work together. I believe this is true. Let's help them. <laughs> Let's help them. I, I think it was the watercolors versus the gouache. To be yeah? honest. Yeah, I think I think someone was talking about transparency <laughs> and gouache took it, you know, as gouache does and kind of an opaque. Gouache way. should not talk smack. <laughs> That's gouache's problem. But no, I mean, gouache water... talk smack. You can just see right through the watercolor, so it's really easy. It's a glaze. It's a glaze. You're real easy to bluff. Oh my gosh. It is a day. I've just taken this whole thing much farther than it was ever should have been. It's true. Now, if you've not painted before, a couple things you might notice. I always get the paint on the edge of my bristles right there. That's called the toe of the brush. And where I want to go big areas, I use the flat of the brush and brush everything in. But where I want to come around a curve like this, I take it up on the edge of this and I steer it like a car. And that's how I'm able to get that effect. You guys see that? Yeah. And then I go back and fill it all in. And if I have a boo-boo, I don't, I just have a boo-boo there, but I don't worry because I can come back with white paint. I'm not that concerned. But you know, I got to paint my ghost white. Super powerful orange. It's a super powerful orange. It's going to take a little bit of white to cover it up. That being said, <laughs> it's still a lot of fun. Everyone, yeah. Everyone's wanting to make sure your shoulder's doing better today. So my shoulder is really strained. It's got some inflammation. I have to be careful with how much I'm painting. I can't do um, a lot of the long hours. And if I wake up and it's at all sharp or um, it's not loose, then I have, I'm not allowed to be on there. <laughs> So is the, it, it, that's the instructions I'm, so, and I'm going to listen to them and listen to my, I'm taking the Arnica on everybody's advice and I'm putting ice. I'm being very careful. I'm, I'm, I'm um, going to go sit in one of those ice cubes. No, I'm not. I'm going to go totally gonna go tell on you before the show. She totally designed this beautiful butterfly <laughs> painting that I'm not going to ruin, but yeah. So she was, she's absolutely. Okay, I maybe wasn't supposed to do that. Not but I had listening. a really good idea, and I was afraid I was going to forget it, and I wasn't sure my notebook was enough to keep that idea. And then once I was in it, I was like, this is the greatest painting ever. I may or may not be, but in the moment, I, you ever get in a painting, you feel like, this is the greatest painting I've ever painted in my life. I have never felt that, but, but I like watching you do it. Anyway, so I was having that. So, yeah, I might have. I might have spent more hours technically at the easel than I was supposed to, but I didn't want to cancel this class, so I didn't. I think that you spent more today than you're supposed to all week. So, did you, you paint your background orange? Boy, you know, husband's telling you. Fine. After your background painted orange. I know where you sleep. I know what? where all the ice cream is. <laughs> I'm not sure I want to start something with me. <laughs> Now, the reason I'm going over this so particularly is I want to I want to have a nice, smooth background for this particular look of painting, you know, so I'm kind of making sure that there's enough coverage of the paint. Yeah. And oranges, yellows, certain colors can be uh, very transparent to a little bit transparent. So you may find that you need two coats. Here's the trick with acrylic paint. If you're trying to paint another layer over a layer that's underneath, you're going to want to really make sure that it's dry. Right now, I'm going to rinse this out and I'm going to push my brush into the bottom of the glass, swishing back and forth. And that's how I'm, and I'm doing this vigorously. This is a vigorous little swish. There's gentle swishing where I'm just sort of pulling a little bit of the pigment out, and there's vigorous. This is a vigorous one, just something you might not know. Then I drag off the extra, and there's little orange drops in there. Whoa, where was I going for my coffee cup? Thank goodness there's a lid. <laughs> I anticipated. I got a second thing of water just to make sure my brush is dry. <laughs> now I'm going to paint in my little wings a little bit because they're pink. No, no, they're blue. So to get my blue, I'm going to take a little of my blue into this brush even, and I'm going to kind of put some of it on there. And then I'm going to get my white, 
and I'm going to make a nice, nice light white. Now, I've got some heavy bodied paint here, and then I also have uh, what's called, in acrylic painting, it's called soft body paint. And all they mean when you see that medium body, soft body, heavy body, is how thick the frosting is. If you do baking, you can think of this as like a ganache. <laughs> Right? And this is a buttercream. You just skipped right into analogies. You just went, boom, analogy. So Is that okay? Sure. So soft body is... So, so the soft body is this ganache-looking consistency. That would be like your craft paints and specialty high-end paints by uh, companies. Okay, and medium like body? That is a lot what they kind of refer to as student paint, where it was like maybe supposed to be heavy body, but it didn't have enough in it. So sort of like it doesn't go all the way i would say that's like you know that like uh it's not quite a buttercream frosting but it doesn't like you couldn't pipe a flower from it yeah that's medium okay. body and then heavy body there is... you can pipe a flower gotcha okay i don't know if this helps you but maybe it does for all the bakers i they, like we got it you got it and people who eat frosting because True. i mean you don't have to Cookie make frosting lovers. to know a lot about frosting i have a lot of feelings on frosting that are not even about baking so what I've done here is I've taken this blue and my white, and you notice I didn't go to the middle of my white here. That's a mistake you can make when you're really new is go right in the middle because that's going to get all that blue in there and you're never getting a nice bright color again. So you have to be sure that you leave some of your white clean when you're trying to paint those bright colors. I'm going to come into my wing here. I'm going to come along and make sure... I am somewhat inside the lines. If my orange paint is still wet and it gets into the blue, it's going to make it not as bright. And the trick to that will be to dry your painting all the way through and just paint over it. Because that's what acrylic paint does really, really well. It just paints over its own boo-boos. So you don't really have boo-boos. Layers. You have layers. I'm going to come right here and I'm going to do this other side. I'm going to dip for one drop of water just the toe of my brush. That's the edge of the bristles. Just that. And I'll paint in this wing. Isn't that fun? Yeah. Well, it's fun for me. It's fun for me to watch. I'm using the edge of my brush, right? I'm steering it like a car, steering like a car. Now, when I come here and I want to do the scallops, I don't steer like a car because that's a lot. I come in and I use the edge of my brush and I chip right up into the edge of that. See how I'm doing? Yeah. Whoop. Whoa! Got to fix right that. Away. I had too it much water cool, in my brush, and I pressed too hard, and that's where that drip came from. It looks really cool, though. It does look really cool. It's because of the contrasting colors, huh? It really is because of the contrasting colors, but I can see that the orange paint was still a little bit wet, so that's going to be harder to fix than usual. So I was just more kind of paying attention to how cool the drip was. Sorry. It's a very cool drip. Now, honestly, in my normal art practice, I might leave the drip and then decide to drip all the stuff because I do think it's cool. But instead, I wiped out my brush. And I'm going to come up here and see I brushed right back into my wing. Oh, yeah. So this gets a lot of that blue pigment out. Oh, it lifts up some of that. Uh... But it lifted up some of what was underneath. So I'm going to get some more of the mix here. I'll come back and repair this little chipping on the wing. Now, I don't press as hard, do I? So these are all little things that I'm just trying to show you that might be frustrating. If you're painting flat, it's very unlikely you'll ever see that problem. But if you're painting at a table easel or an easel, that's something that can happen to you. Now, to fix that, if you're curious how you might fix that kind of boo-boo, are you? Are you curious? Yes, you are. Let me dry it with my hair dryer. All right. So if you're going to dry your uh, painting at home, make sure that uh, you use your hair dryer on the lowest heat setting because uh, hot air really isn't good for acrylic paint. It's just the actual air moving that's good for it. So what you want to do is set it on the lowest heat so that you're just using the air to circulate across the top because uh, you can induce color change and shrinkage on student paints and things like that. Not so much your pro paints, but... Uh, do be aware of that. That's a good place to just keep that in mind. So, uh, oh, thank you guys for coming and hanging out. And hello to all the little brushes I, and, and lots of new brushes. I saw that we had a 79-year-old new brush with us uh, who is, I think, painting from Florida. So, hello, new brush. Um, it's really great to see all you guys out here. Really, really wonderful to spend this time with you. And thank you. Thank you so much um, for taking the time. And uh, hopefully Sin will come bail me out soon because... 
you know, I'm not really left with anything much of a plan when she bails. Right? What? You don't leave me with much of a plan here. With? Do I don't have about, a plan? No, you don't leave me with much of a plan. Oh, I'm sorry. No. So I got all the extra <laughs> She's water not really out sorry, of my brush, and I'm loading up my orange, and I'll just come back and paint over this. And I'll take a couple of coats. But I will absolutely be able to take that out in one to two coats. Gotcha. If it's super dark, right? Like if that were super dark, you would paint that white first and orange over it. Ah. So it's really about how dark is the boo-boo, right? How dark is your boo-boo? If it's super dark, then you got to paint it white first. And if it's not that dark, and I can even come right here, I'm going to just... It's really bleeding through. I think it might be dark enough for me to have to do this. See this white here? Yeah. That's really good for people to be able to see, though. And you can come back as you're doing other layers of the painting, too, can't yep. you? Yep, and I just, add, I just paint over it, and it will just eventually disappear. It is one of the nice things about having a very solid background, right, is that I can come over and I can add another coat so super easily before I put the bokeh on. So this is your moment. If you have any areas you want to coat differently than what you have, that would be the time to do it. I'm going to rinse out so thoroughly because I want the inside of my ghost to be white because he's a ghost. Mm, this I like is true. to say ghost. Ghost. <laughs> if you know me, for, if you watch the show for a while, you've heard ghost hostess. <laughs> Is that just, I, I don't know, I like I to say it that way. I, I, you know, I haven't seen her in a few days, So, but she's, she was around here about a week ago, I believe. Yeah, and whenever so. John says her name out loud, then I have to be like, ghost hostess. <laughs> so one drop of water, that means that the brush is holding about that much water in it. I'm going to come here and I'm going to get my white paint thinned. See how far one drop of water actually goes? And what I'm doing here is I'm incorporating all of the water into the paint so that I can start painting my background. Now, there's a... There we go, just painting our background so our little ghosty is white. Now, is, 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 they're curious. The ghost, does the ghost have a unicorn horn? Yes. Or a party hat. It's a unicorn horn. Mm. I recognize it could be mistaken as a party hat, but in my mind when I created it, it's a unicorn horn, so I'm going to just own that. If you think that that is a strange and unusual call, you're allowed no, to call no. yours a party hat. But see, I just was like, I like narwhals, and I like ghosts, and I like Halloween, and um, yeah. So nope. that's where it, it, it struck me. That's what I thought was going on here, but actually it might just be... Now, what is undead etiquette? Like, if you come across another ghost and you're like, is that a horn or a hat? Or is that rude? I, I would say um, always rude. Well, so you just have to wait until... till like, you know, don't ask questions like that. That's always <laughs> rude. That's, that was rude in life and it's rude now. If you don't know if something is real, don't ask. Okay, well, that's good to know. <laughs> right? She's so just painting in some more of the white on the background I'm here. I'm just painting in the white, and I'm questioning your decision-making choices. I was just, I was just asking what they were asking in chat. Really? They're like, "What would you do, guys? You gotta know that. Like, you don't, you wouldn't go up to somebody and be like, is that hair real? That would not be okay. No, that I, would not be okay. Even though I don't really like, I personally don't care. No, we assume the spider you're my wearing is not is real. My hair is real, but I'll wear pieces on occasion. I don't care if people are like, is that real? Because my hair is purple so, and blue and green and all kinds of crazy colors. There would be no reason for anyone to assume any of this is real. This is, but... It's attached. It's attached. <laughs> I mean, none of it's a hologram, so I guess it's all real. And then the, what we believe in is real. I suppose it's all sort of experiential. Wow. This very simple... <laughs> Ghost this is what my kids don't talk deep. to me about anything. <laughs> They're like, parachute out, parachute out. No. All right, I'm going to just come here. And I'm just adding a little tail. So I had lost a little tail earlier. So i just bringing that with my little edge. Because I just want him to have a little bit of a more tail. I'm outlining him so he'll be okay. Right? Right. 
There we go. There we go. Now, I'm going to do this next part with my brush, but if you're at all concerned about it, you can do it with your pouncer, just if you're like, I'm never going to get these circles. I'm going to sneak up and get just a smidge, just a smidge. Like, look how little that is of pink. I'm going to mix some white into it and get another little smidge of pink. Can you guys smidge with me? They smidge. Do. Smidge, technical art term, must be respected. Now I'm gonna make a little circle, and the reason I'm gonna show you the cheeks like this, it's gonna help you make the bokeh if you don't have the sponge. So I'm gonna put a, a pink and a pink right here. I put my brush in, and I'm gonna twirl around, twirl around, then I come back and I twirl to get the circle. See? So if I don't have a bokeh sponge, that's how I would get that in. And I wanted to make sure you guys saw me do this like at least once where I'm trying to get these little cheeks and I'm using the shape of the brush to do it. And then I just come back and I just paint and feather and shade and make sure I've got a nice little cheek. Right, you can come around. But that's how I do it with the brush. All right, so now we have that and that. I'm gonna rinse my brush out because now I've got happy little cheeks, right? Who doesn't love that? Happy little cheeks. I gotta fix my orange boo-boo. Shall we see how it's going? I rinsed out, I'm gonna come right here hey. and go over it. So anytime the surface underneath changes the surface on top, that's induced discoloration from the structure. Structural induced discoloration is what that is. It can happen a variety of ways. Most commonly painting over a Sharpie <laughs> would be the typical way in which you might struggle with that. Now, how I use my washi tape to help me with the horn is I like to have nice edges and I find sometimes making stripes can be hard. So take a little bit of tape. You can use any tape you have. This is just nice because it's good for the painting, right? And I'm going to come along outside the horn. And I'm going to just tape along this edge just to make sure they got a nice edge and burnish it. That means I'm going to rub it. See, it's burnishing whenever you hear someone say burnish. I'm going to burnish it with my finger. Finger burnishing is the best kind of burnishing. Is it? I don't know. I thought if you had a burnishing tool. It really that was is like... probably better to have a burnishing tool. I'm being silly. But see, I'm just rubbing this edge. Now look, whether you're doing masking tape, whether you're doing a low tack tape, whether you're doing high end painters tape or washi tape, you do need to burnish the edges down so that the paint doesn't leak underneath. Otherwise you'll get these weird little bleedy things. Hmm. Now, I'm gonna use a slightly smaller square brush, I think for this. Actually, yes, I am gonna, use a slightly smaller square brush. <laughs> you seem to be questioning your well, own. Well, I was like, should I show everyone how to just never change brushes? But that's a ridiculous thing. Just, that's like showing everyone how you can go through. I don't mean to make another geek reference, but how you could go through Laura Croft and only use one set of guns and just a certain amount of ammo. It's just how my dad plays. So, Only All right. with pistols. Only with pistols. With Laura Croft. All right, so I'm loading up the brush and I'm flipping back and forth and I'm making a pastel yellow. Can you guys see that pastel yellow? And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to come across and follow the arc of the head, right? And I'm going to get a stripe. It's a nice stripe, isn't it? Little stripes. You know, you can always put a little extra yellow on the corner there. And then when you stripe, you get <gasps> ombre stripes. Super fun. All right. Since I've already got this thing loaded with yellow, I'll wipe like this. And I'll go ahead and grab a bit of my green that I've got here. Look at that nice bright green. So definitely I could have like a stripe here. And I feel like, you know, I'm, I'm going to have different amounts of room. So I've just got to kind of go along and see where the room is. I'm going to rinse out a bit. A bit, if you like. A bit. I'll rinse out a bit. And I'm going to get some of my pink, boom, 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 and some of my white. 
making it even pinker. And I'm going to come here and make another little stripe. Well, that's fun. Kind of looks like the washi tape. You know, I'll rinse out. And sometimes it's nice to come along here and just make sure you've got nice edges between the stripes. Let's get a little of our blue on here, or blue and white. That's a nice color. How's that? There we go. Rinsing out. I love vigorous swish. And the reason it's a vigorous swish is we're getting all the pigment out, right? We're getting all the paint out. Vigorous swish. Okay. That's doing pretty good. That's a pretty happy little little thing. We'll let that dry for a second. Now, to what I said earlier, because I've worked with a lot of little brushes and I know you guys can be super literal. While I do want you to do your best to not like make a mistake, crumple up and throw away, if ever you're having a genuine anxiety attack, it is okay to start over one or two times. Just don't let it become your whole day because that can be a thing that happens in art. So don't want you to be like, I can never start over and I hate this piece. We never want you to feel bad in a painting. So be sure to take a deep breath. <sighs> Remember, everything in art is about making little adjustments, going with the flow. So if ever myself or any teacher says something that you know isn't right for you, it is okay to do something else. I just think that's important to say while I'm letting people oh, yeah. try. I was reading chat. So. Oh, okay. Um, and... Uh, just uh, you were talking about the different kinds of paint earlier. Mm -hmm. One that you didn't mention is open paint or right. uh, extending extended paint. What is it for? Okay, so um, acrylic paint dries really fast. And sometimes people, uh, for either health reasons or preference reasons, want to switch from oil to acrylic. But they don't enjoy how quickly the acrylic paint dries. So open, right? or a retarded paint or um, an extended paint. Basically what that means is they've added a polymer that doesn't dry as quickly. It's drying time is slower, therefore it's open. The ability to mix it goes on longer. Gotcha. But it's still acrylic. So it's a thing you can do. If you really, really are having problem with the paint drying on you and not getting a chance to blend it, you can add a medium to slow the drying time down or you can buy a paint like Golden Open and this, or in, uh, Interactive Outlayer. There's another one. There's a couple. You can do different things. Lots of solutions for that. Okay. So let's see. We're going to peel this little sucker. I'm going to go boom. See if we have a nice, a nice uh, horn, right? Yeah. <gasps> we do. Look at that nice horn. I just never get edges like that on my own. <laughs> yeah, that turned out really nice. Now I'm going to grab. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Need a little round brush, but I think I put it in the sink to wash, and I don't see it here anywhere. Oh, wait, I see one I can use over here, though. So I'll use this. This is a number four round. And basically, it's a brush that gives me nice point. See that? That helps me do some details. And sometimes I want to do some details, so it can be very helpful. I'm going to grab my black paint, and I get it loaded into my brush. I kind of swirl it around, and I get it on the tip. And I'm going to come between these cute little cheeks and make my little ghost oblong circle. See, it's a very long, skinny circle. It's a long, skinny circle. Now, painting with black paint can be kind of crazy because if you make any boo-boos, here, I'll make a boo-boo. Right? I'm going to go like that. But look, it's okay even if, if he gets kind of a crazy face. All right? Make a little boo-boo. I'm going to just paint that open. So if you have an oopsie, don't panic, right? Don't do that. Just be like, it's okay. This is going to be a little more singy than maybe you initially started out. And it's not going to be wrong, and it's not going to matter, and it's not going to hurt anything. Now I'm going to put a little circle here. And this is the other way I can do circles. See how I just travel around with this round brush? Oh, yeah. That's the other way to do circles. So now you're like learning all these different ways to do circles. 
lots of ways to do circles, so don't stress out. If I have trouble painting, I go back and get more paint. Don't stress on it. Now at this stage, I can either outline in green or the black. I decided to outline in green. If that works well for you, you can do that too, or you can outline in black, or as was pointed out by my daughter, it's cool to not outline things now. So however you wanna do it to finish him is completely okay, but I'll show you how I outline in green. So this is that soft body paint, right? So it's the consistency of ganache, right? So more fluid. And I'm gonna come in very carefully, line the space between the two colors. This is a whole job that you can have. Be a liner? Yes. So I could aspire to go to college to be a Unighost liner? Yes. That's kind of cool. I'm just saying. It's a I real job a, that you can have. I didn't know there was that much of a market for lining Unighosts. Well, it, you might have to line more than Unighost, but you're the person who inks. <laughs> oh. Well, you know, what if I was just wanting to specialize? You know, uh, uh, you'll have, you would be very dependent on the Unigos market. <laughs> it's I'll probably to, very seasonal work. I, I'll have to check into that. We'll see how it goes next year. I'm just coming along and just making sure I've got this nice dark contrast between these spaces. And that helps create some dimensionality. Now, Debbie was asking. And why I like the green because it's orange. Yes, Debbie. Can you say, talk about the pros and cons of lining? Well, anytime that you line something, you begin to flatten the object, right? You flatten it into the picture plane, and you change how those objects relate to your eye. So if you're trying to show a flattened area, and you want more contrast between two spaces, lining can create an incredible element. If you think of it in stained glass, the way the black of the lead in the stained glass flattens that image actually adds to the extraordinary elements within it because you're almost moving away from that three-dimensionality that you might have in real life. So that's why we like to see that in cartooning and in comic work because it creates a lot of extra drama, right? If my figures are in some way outlined, then they really stand in stark contrast to the environments that they're in. Even if stuff is in 3D, it's a very cool effect. John used to be a big fan of it in video games. It's true. He did. He loved when they would do lining in video games. Cell shading. Shell cell shading. And it does. It just creates a different effect within the space. But again, it's really up to you and what you love. This is super fun for me, so I don't mind it. But if it wasn't fun for you, you might mind it. And I think it's important to recognize that when we have teachers and when we're learning, that we're trying to do the work that we're being taught so we learn the skills, but we also make room for us as students to recognize what's right or wrong for us in a situation. This is just on my mind recently because I'm doing um, a really cool project uh, called Lifebook and there was a wellness summit and we had offered uh, just just so that people, if they didn't have anything, they could have something. Um, the sounds that I had used to paint my project and a lot of people did not want to listen to like the rainstorm. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> you know, if you need to change up the music, change up the music. That way you still get the experience. That's super important. And ooh, if you run by my Facebook page, the Archerpa on Facebook, that's redundant. There is a contest going on right now for a free giveaway for Lifebook. If you want to go enter, it's only going until the 16th of October, 2018. So if you watch this two years later, I'm very sorry you missed the contest, but I'm sure there's another one going on somewhere. Um, so you can enter that. I don't know. I just thought I'd help people. Might not know what's there. You just got to take a poll. You don't need to buy anything or join anything or follow anything or like anything. You just got to you just got to take a poll and there isn't like a right or wrong answer. Pretty pretty easy. And you That's might That's very awesome. 
It is. I thought it was awesome. I was like, I make no conditions. What are your conditions? None. No conditions. Do what you like. Whatever makes you happy. So I'm going to pull a little white into my brush and I'm going to get a little water because remember this paint is quite heavy and thick and stiff. And by grabbing these little drops of water and using my brush to incorporate it in there, I'm getting it to be that consistency, aren't I? Like that's the consistency that I'm going for. So I'm going to come over to my eyes and I'm going to put a couple reflections in there. So that's one little dot, two little dots, another little dot, and another little dot. Oh, so cute. Now everything that's left is bokeh. So let me show you how I would use my bokeh sponges to create some fun party effects. Because you can pounce if you want to. <sighs> you can. All right. So first, I'm going to get some pink on my sponge. I come and I swirl, 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 swirl. And I'll just go over here and get some of this white because it's sitting looking unguarded. And I'll swirl it. I'm going to grab a little harsher color of the pink. So I've got two tones, right? You two tones. Two tones. Look at all those tones. That's lots That's of That's multi-tonal. Multi-tonal. I think you've gone beyond the two. I think I've gone beyond the two. And I'm going to press in and twist. Press in and twist. Press in and twist. Twist. Now, it's not press in twist. and twist. Press in and twist. Press, like just a little bit of a push, not a hard push. Can you guys see the compression? I don't know if the camera can show you. Yeah, you can. I'm just it. connecting firmly and twisting. I'm going to do it oh, here. Wait, wait, wait. Let me get over it. See, i got to just focus once I get over there. Okay. Okay, right? So when I come in, I press about that hard. It's not super light. It's a little engaged, but it wouldn't be like squish. That would be too much. See? Yeah. And then when you lift it up, you get that cool. It's a cool effect. I'm not saying it's not. We did that with the moon yesterday. We were like, yay. So it can be fun to tap too, right? Focus do cool things. I'm going to do a couple colors here around. Then we're nearly done because when we're done bulking. Now, wash your sponges out right away when you're done. I'm going to mist mine so it can make it to the end of this class. That's what I gotta do. Can you can you dunk them in the in the, the water? Um, I my water is like crazy right now. Oh, I'll I'll take them. Okay, so now I'm gonna dry this real quick because when I come over with my green and yellow, if it got into my beautiful bright pink, they would make a yicky grant like zombie color, which is only good if I'm painting zombies. But I'm not. I'm painting a ghost, so zombie colors are not appropriate here because this is a happy ghost. All right, ready? Okay, so. If you guys look in the description down below, you'll see a little thing that says link to the traceables. Now, that's going to actually bring you to our website, to today's project page. And what's really interesting about that is on that project page, you can find everything that you need to work on this pa on this uh, this painting. You'll find the reference image, you'll find the traceable, you'll find all that kind of stuff there. But also, you'll find a link to our search engine. Go ahead there. Oh, okay. He's going to tell you why I'm doing this. So I've got some yellow on there. I'm going to grab a little bit of green so you can see those colors mixed together. And I'm just going to come around and add these very bright, poppy little things. Now, I didn't in the original put one over, but of course you could add bokeh to him if you wanted to. They could travel over. But I'm saying our little star here is in front of the little flashes, these little bubbles. So I'm just going to pounce away till I'm happy. You can also, you know, come in and get more green color and so you can make another tone. Isn't that crazy? Ooh, it is. It's super fun. And you can't really do it wrong. I really like these. I think these are really great. They have an extra dense foam. They have a hole in the back. If you do happen to accidentally pounce with like all the force that you have in your body, like you're like, hey man. And so if it gets stuck in there, you can get it back out with a small brush or Q-tip. Yep. And it's two-sided and it's got the comfort concave on it. So it's pretty nice. They're I'm actually pretty proud of them. All I got to do left is sign, John. It is. That's all I got to do. So what I'm going to do is I've just got to pick a color and I guess I'll pick my blue and white color. This is a special signature brush called a monogram liner. I get asked a lot, can you use a paint pen? And I'd like to say, yes, you can. You can use a paint pen. It is nice to sign just so that you know you made it. I'm going to put my little signature here. But I always like to think about how the signature goes with the piece. Does it add or take away? Because I wouldn't want to make a big, ugly mark that made the whole painting not work. That would be sad. So 
I worked really hard on this, and I want it to be cute. I'm very happy. That looks great. So this was my rest my shoulder. We'll see how I do <laughs> overnight. I'll post in the morning if I'm good. I know that's late notice, but that's what I'm going to have to do right now. Mm. And if I'm not, you know, I've got the abstract landscape coming up. So as I can, I will. And I'm sorry I'm a little bit. But you got to take care of yourself, right? You're great. We loving this. This is awesome. So I hope you like the extra kind of more expanded out explanations because I know many of you are going to be painting with kids. Kids, don't let your moms and dads and grandmas and grandpas and friends freak out. Remind them this is just art. We don't need to take it so seriously. We're supposed to have a little bit of fun. because You're supposed to be good to yourself and good to each other. And I want to see you at the easel really soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.